from SF Land, this is Dorking Out, a podcast for people who love to dork out about movies, TV, and everything pop culture. Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and I said put the bunny back in the box. Joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister and the co-host of Dorking Out, Margot D. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. I'm just wearing sandals, which makes me very interesting. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> I don't get it. We are celebrating our 90s in November by dorking out about 1997's Con Air. This is like peak Nicolas Cage. It is so representative of like all those like Jerry Bruckheimer action movies of the 90s. Uh, so we thought this was a really good one. It stars Nicolas Cage, John Cusack, John Malkovich. It's, it's so many people, you guys. Steve Buscemi, Ving Rhames, uh, that guy from Forrest Gump, Danny Trejo, <laughs> Monica Potter, <laughs> like, <laughs> that chick from The Thing, you know, uh, the guy from The Commitments. Everybody's in this movie. Uh, it's directed by Simon West. Did you see this movie in the theater, Margot? I definitely saw this in the movie theater. Me too. <laughs> did you like it? I'm sure I did. I think this is a very enjoyable movie. It's very much of its time. It's mm -hmm. super problematic. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was a fun little 90s, you know, smash em up kind of movie with a bunch of people in it that I like. So, and I think it was the first time John Cusack was in an action film. That's probably right. It's super, it's such an interesting cast. So, okay, so like before this, Nicolas Cage was doing things like he was, in, of course, he was in like Valley Girl and he won an Oscar for leaving Las Vegas. And he had done The Rock before this. And The Rock was also a Jerry Bruckheimer movie. And I think, wasn't that like one of his first action movies? And then it was all of a sudden like serious actor now can do action movies. And then he just kind of went down this road. It was like The Rock, Con Air, like Gone in 60 Seconds. Face Off came out, came out like a few months after this. It was like yeah. action star Nicolas Cage became a thing with this he, It's movie. like he got into shape. He got into really good shape yeah. and decided like this was going to be the right. And he made a lot of money doing this. Yeah. And I don't know if you know this, but true story, he made Con Air – and he left the set to fly directly to the set for Face Off, like oh. the same day. He went from one set to the other and then just start, kept going. And he was making really good money doing this, and yeah. a lot of money. Uh, but he was married a few times, and then the, the parts started kind of dwindling a little bit. And he owed a lot of money to the yeah. IRS. So now he does anything. He'll yes. do just about anything if you pay him. That's This is true. And But one of the things I loved about these early Nicolas Cage action movies was his his performance was still super weird like he was mm -hmm. still like making these weird choices like I'm gonna have a southern accent or you know or just these like weird like lines that he would say like there's something in the rock where he says what in the name of like Zeus's butthole are you talking about I'm like no one talks like that <laughs> like it's just these like weird things that Nicolas Cage so he's like quirky action star that kind of made these movies feel just a little different it wasn't like bad boys where they were just like super cool looking all the time like I don't I no, I think it's still like he's doing that uh, Peggy Sue got married yeah. sort of thing. Like he's making a choice with the voice, with the accent, yeah. with the mullet. Yes. That is a hell of a mullet I, he's rocking there. I love that you brought up Peggy Sue got married. It is like one of my favorite Nicolas Cage performances is Nicolas Cage and Peggy Sue got married. It's one of those things like it's so distracting when you see yeah. first see the movie. I've seen the movie dozens of times since then. And now I just expect it when I see it and yeah. I can notice everybody else, but it just sticks out like yeah. the voice that he did and everything. He's such yeah. a weirdo. <laughs> he's so strange. And he's been married like how many times? Yeah. And this last time he was married for exactly like three days. And he basically admits he was just drunk. And oh just... my God. It's so he's, a... he's crazy, but he's I'll... nuts. He's I'll fucking say... nuts. He's totally fucking nuts. I'll say this though. He, he seems like a pretty hard worker. Like, dude's always in movies. He's never not working. 
He just he has to. He doesn't know what to do with his money. Clearly, well, but. <laughs> well, he, he yeah, he had like multiple properties. He had his own plane. Don't get a plane, guys. Did he own an it's island too much or money. something? Yeah, he did the whole thing, he's and crazy. it's yeah, it's nuts. That's why he's amazing. Um, let's see. Where do we? Uh, where did I leave off? Oh, let's just start at the beginning. So yeah, at the top of the film. The movie opens with like, um, like footage from like the war in Iraq. I'm like, what movie are we watching? It's like serious stuff. <laughs> and then we find out that Nicolas Cage's character, uh, Cameron Poe, such a good movie name. Cameron Poe <laughs> has been discharged from the army honorably. He like served his time. He's like, you know, Mr. Good Guy. Uh, and he goes to like find meet his wife. She's like working at a bar. Apparently she's super pregnant. I don't know how far that she along, does, but she doesn't look. <laughs> it's like she got pregnant that afternoon or something. She's like super slim, and we, it's very strange because I was confused. I'm like, wait a second, did he just get home? Yeah. Like, did he just look at her and she got pregnant all like right now? Yeah. Or like, where did where did this pregnancy yeah. come from? Like, was he home on leave? When? Was it like a week ago? Like, because she's she's very slim. Yeah. I don't I don't her get it. Her stomach is completely flat completely yeah. flat and then but there's a whole thing about like he gets down on his knees and he's talking to the baby and i was like what baby <laughs> what are you doing dude <laughs> like it's such a weird it was just this weird thing where the, i mean i knew i've seen the movie before so i knew that like she was pregnant but seeing it this time i was like she's what <laughs> it was very confusing and then, of course, there's these, like, assholes in the bar who are, like, I guess they're hot for his wife. And they're like, oh, I'd do anything to get a piece of that. So they, like, instantly pick a fight with him. But, and, by the way, like, they hate – this is Mobile, Alabama. Yeah. It's a military town, and it's the South. Yes. They kind of like their soldiers there. Right. You know what I mean? The, everyone who serves is treated respectfully there, except at this one bar <laughs> where they find out – that you served heroically in a war that you weren't drafted for. You you signed up for right. voluntarily, and they're just going to hassle him? Yeah, and, it's super weird. But not thinking he has any kind of skills that he developed, being in the, you know, army thing, or he might be armed because yeah. he was in the army. Well, no. And then, yeah. and then they say, it's, you know, pussies like you are the reason we lost Vietnam. I'm like, how old are you, dude? <laughs> you weren't even old when Viet. You weren't even there when Vietnam was a no, thing. No, you were in <laughs> kindergarten. You don't have sides in this. I mean, come on. Like, what a bunch of assholes. What I'm saying is they deserve to die. That's all. That's of all course, I'm saying. Of course, of course. So he, these jerks, like, pick a fight with him. And even though it's, like, obviously self-defense, and no jury in the world would convict him in the real world. First of all, A, because he's a white man. Two, because he's a soldier. Yes. And three, because he's clearly defending himself. Um, he still gets sentenced. He, they still find him guilty. And they send him to jail because, quote, with his, mili you know, his military skills, um, you're a deadly weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I have to say, my dad, the biggest thing he hated in movies was when someone was unjustly convicted of a thing and had to go to jail. Right. My dad couldn't watch that stuff. It <gasps> always just made him so angry. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it does happen, but yeah. Um, but it is like it's such one of those like bullshit movie things. <laughs> like I'm, a, you're a deadly weapon. <laughs> so I'm gonna send you away for seven years. Yeah. Yeah. Which was, but it was obviously self defense. I mean, the worst it should have been was manslaughter, if right. anything. But any any news crew, any like the mobile press or whatever would have written a glowing thing about him and no one would have gone through with this. Totally. And, you know, if this happened now, our president would definitely pardon him. So, oh, yeah, you could do whatever you want now. Um, what do you think of Nicolas Cage's accent, by the way? I think it's pretty terrible. And <laughs> and and I just I did some trivia research on it and he supposedly spent time in mobile. Maybe, to perfect it. <laughs> he maybe need to spend a little bit more time there. I think so. Or a little less. I don't know. That's it it's quite an accent. It's a choice. He's making a very big choice here. And he sticks with it. So good for you, Nicolas Cage. Yes. <laughs> so he's in jail and he's just trying to like serve his time. He's like 
spending all this time in his cell reading books. I actually like how they show the passage of time with him, like getting all these books and then he's like learning Spanish and he's making origami and like all this <laughs> stuff. I'm like, oh, that's maybe what I would do when I'm in prison. <laughs> he's, yeah. You know, he's working out all the time and growing out his hair. He's taking those like, he's probably taking those gummy vitamins that are like really good for your hair because <laughs> his hair gets really great. Like very really, luscious. Very luscious, long hair, but it's still receding in the front, but the back <laughs> is amazing it's, a, it's, it's, it's all business up top and a party in the back it's total party <laughs> in the back so then he gets paroled oh he also meets his friend um what's it baby o uh, baby o so that's michael t williamson yes. who was in forrest gump I, i'm always like that's the guy from forrest gump <laughs> Yeah, he's Bubba Gump. I mean, he's Bubba, not Bubba yeah. Gump, but Bubba. Yeah. No, but this is his, I don't know if this is his first part after that movie or whatever, but it's always hard to, to not call him Bubba. Yeah, I mean, he's basically playing the same character. Absolutely. It, you know, so that's why I was like, eh, it's, the, it's the guy from Forrest Gump. They just need Lieutenant Dan, and it'd be like the <laughs> same thing. Um, so he gets paroled, and for some reason, they are, they put him on a, they're sending all of the like worst of the worst to a new facility. And I don't know why they think this is a good idea, but they put like the worst of the worst all on one plane together. And yeah, so and Cameron Poe, guy who's getting paroled on the plane getting, as well. If why is he getting if he's getting paroled, why are they sending him to a new prison? I, I don't I don't understand I don't what's it. happening because no. he murdered somebody. It, 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 we can argue whether or not he murdered someone. It was manslaughter, right. whatever. He killed someone in Alabama, sentenced in Alabama, but he's not in Alabama? Like, he's not serving in Alabama? Don't you usually, do you serve time in the yeah. state in which you, like, you wouldn't murder someone in California and then they send you to Florida to serve your time? Like... Why is he getting on a plane at all? I I don't understand. I, I don't. I, it makes no sense to me. There is a really weird thing in this movie, and we talked about a little bit before we turned on the recording, which is I don't know where anyone is in this movie <laughs> at any given time. <laughs> like I, I don't I don't understand. Or I'm like, are they in California? Are they in Texas? Are they in Alabama? Where are they going? I don't understand where they're going. It makes no sense to me. And then this is when, so they get on this plane. It's filled with the worst of the worst. And that's when we meet John Cusack. Yeah. And his defining characteristic seems to be he slouches a lot, but also he wears sandals mm -hmm. with socks. Yeah. And he's wearing a suit that's so big. And I wrote in my notes, is he wearing his father's suit? It's so <laughs> ill-fitting. And I don't know if that's a character choice he's making. Like, yes. okay, this is dumb. And people usually associate me with more highbrow things. But I'll do it, but only that I can wear sandals mm -hmm. and I can be a little weird. But yeah. he supposedly doesn't talk about this movie. It's, he has several movies he will not talk about, and this is one of them. Well, that's too bad because it's actually yeah. a really entertaining movie, and he doesn't yeah. need to be such a snob about it because he went on to make movies that are much worse than this movie. And this movie is <laughs> very entertaining. <laughs> yes. And yeah. I, I really love John Cusack. I, I kind of will always have a crush on him. Like, sure. I just do. But like, he is, I'm like, he's wearing his father's suit. It's too big. And the sandals, I don't know what he's doing. But he is, he's still very cute. He, But he's, his job, he works for the government. Um, but I think, but he yeah. and Cole Meany are in charge of this transfer of these worst of the worst, the murderer's row of douchebag criminals, yes. right? That's what this plane is filled with. And then John Cusack insists that there's no, guns uh, that the guards can't have guns on them yeah I and then but there's guns on the plane they're just on the bottom of the plane mm -hmm. it's super what? weird what it's and so then why is okay and why i'm sorry no. rachel ticketon ticketon yeah uh ticketon what is she why would you have a woman there i'm sorry but it's like filled with like 50 rapists yeah, why would no you shit. have who does who's not armed I and mean, she's by herself i would it's c so... just to throw a woman in there yeah it's so weird um they have a serial rapist on the plane named Johnny 23, played by Danny Trejo. He deserves better than this, by the way. I, it bums me out when I Danny Trejo love plays. Danny Trejo. Yeah. 
it bums me out when he plays serial rapist, which he seems to do a lot. Um, I think he's better than that. But it, but he's also very good at being a bad guy and being creepy. He was in jail. He went to jail himself. Yeah. So, so he has that in his past. Yeah. So we so we meet him, and I'm like, that's gross. We meet, of course. There's the John Malkovich character that's Cyrus the virus, and he's just like <laughs> a criminal mastermind. But uh, one of my favorites is uh, Diamond Dog, which is Ving Rhames. <laughs> Ving Rhames. Yeah. Ving R- I love Ving Rhames. I think he's right. Love. And one of his crimes is he's guilty of blowing up a meeting of the National Rifle Association. <laughs> and the quote is, they represented the basis negativity of the white race. And I was like, no, he's not wrong. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, exactly. This movie about race and sexuality and roles of men and women, mm-hmm. um, it could have easily have been like 87 or 77 yeah. versus 97. I mean, it's so backwards that it's it the, the black characters have t- i mean dave Chappelle is I in this t- movie i totally forgot dave Chappelle was in this movie oh. until it started and i was like holy shit i forgot I dude mean, pinball his name yeah, is his pinball name. and he's totally just like that stereotypical like african american supporting character like i'm here to do whatever the white guy tells me to do Right you know, character is super. It doesn't age well, but I forgot no. he was even in the movie. No, it's filled. It's filled with lots of really good people and really good actors. I but I told you I I can't even read the Wikipedia page. Confuses me. Yeah, I I don't know whatever. So what happens is they two of the 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 two of the prisoners kind of create a distraction. Because, of course, they're going to take over the plane. Duh. Oh, that's one of my favorite parts of the movie. So the minute the plane takes off, literally, like, the the landing gear comes up. And everyone on that plane starts, like, fucking, like, pulling, like, pins out of their hands. and like, Yeah, they all have shit on them. They all have, Nobody like, was searched before they left. Like, he has uh, Dave Chappelle's character, like, pulls a string out of his mouth. It's got, like, a fucking condom filled with, like, gasoline and a match or something. Like, <laughs> like it's like... The movie, it's like the movie Clue or something. Like the second, like the landing gear comes up, it's like shit's on, man. Like everyone starts bringing out all their weapons because they know that the cops aren't going to have guns on them right. on that plane. How would they know that? Uh, because Cyrus the virus is a criminal mastermind. <laughs> John Malkovich, I love John Malkovich. I mean, it, he's crazy, and yeah, but. He puts a lot of pizzazz into this part. Yeah, I he, mean, he, he does. He, he sells absolutely it. does. And that's one of the reasons why this movie is fun to watch because everyone in this movie is doing a thing. They're all yes. doing a thing. Like Nicolas Cage has made a choice. John Cusack has made a choice. John Malkovich has made a, a choice. Uh, we haven't even got to Steve, to Steve Buscemi. He's making a choice. He's in a whole other movie. Yes, in, in a in an awesome way. By the way, I mean that is a huge compliment. <laughs> like, it's it's a cra- It's crazy. Well, we should say so. They take over the plane. They kill one of the pilots, and then they're threatening the other one and saying, "Okay, dude, you got to land in Hendersonville. I think it's right outside of Las Vegas." And and John Cusack and and, and Duncan, it's Cole Meany is is like a real asshole to John Cusack. Yeah. Like right from the start, he's, he's got super- a car with a license plate that says "Ass Kicker." <laughs> that's how you know he's an asshole <laughs> and it's a really nice car too mm-hmm. so it's a sports car but they so the prisoners land the plane and they get rid of the gear that makes you I, be able to track the plane yes. they put it on another plane it's very complicated and they kill some of the guards and they kill some of the uh, dave Chappelle was killed yes. at one point and then they they pick up a new crew, and they're going to fly maybe 100 miles? It doesn't feel like they go very far. I'm like, why didn't they just drive those other prisoners? Why are they picking right. them up at all? Because, you know, to get a plane, you have to, like, take off. you got to hit the whatever. I mean, it just seems like a lot of work. But that's when we meet Steve Buscemi. And he's, like, what is his? It's Garland Green. Yeah. And he, they call and him the Marietta Mangler. And he's... Like, he's our Hannibal Lecter yes. stand-in. Yes, And Steve Buscemi is just underdoing it. He's just underplaying it. I love the scene where he shows up and they got all the gear on him. Yes. And he and then John Malkovich just goes, leads into the cage and says, love your work. 
<laughs> I wrote that down too. I was like, I, I love really, it. I think when you say like he underplays it, I think that's. Ex- I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but I think that's exactly everyone else is like overplaying it. Everyone else is on ten, or yeah. even no, they get ten. They're at twelve, yeah. thirteen, and he's at like seven or eight. Yes. you know what I mean. And that makes it, him so much creepier. Exactly, and that's why we like him. But there's a there's a gay character that's oh my god, I, Sally. Uh, what that, they, they call her? They call him Sally. Don't dance or something. Can't like, dance. Yeah, it's. I'm like I don't. Yeah, and he like gets a dress at one point, and and he runs for that dress. Like the dress yeah. is the most important thing. It's it's not a great representation of I, yeah. gay people. I will say this though: I don't recall there being any weirdness about like anyone saying like I'm not. There's no like, they don't say anything bad about him, do they? It's just no, like but... it's it's the performance that's kind of like, mm, but like it's a little yeah. But there's nothing with the other criminals i don't know it's very strange yes but they so they take off again <laughs> and then john cusack is chasing them with the car cole Meany's car yes and he does a lot of running down hallways like in mm-hmm. slow motion like that's his like action sequence yeah, in the sandals by the way in the sandals which is not safe yeah and uh yeah dave Chappelle, like they throw him out of the plane right and like he lands yes on a car Mm -hmm. and they do that thing where they put a a note on him. Yes. And it's like, but the distance that they flew, he fell out of that plane. You wouldn't find him in one piece when he'd landed. It's very, no, it doesn't make any sense. It's very strange. And then there's all this, like they land on the sunset strip in Vegas Mm -hmm. and they decided if you've ever been to Vegas, it's kind of this encapsulated area surrounded by desert. Yeah, you could have landed you in the desert. <laughs> you could have landed anywhere else. Anywhere else except the main drag, which is like one of the most heavily populated areas on the West. Yes. I mean, just where more people could be killed, I don't know. It's just, it's it's a crazy decision. And Nicolas Cage becomes the hero. Yes. Um, he saves... Rachel Ticketon from being raped. He say, uh, oh, and B- Michael T. Williamson. Yeah, his whole he's thing is di- he's yeah. diabetic. Yeah, that's the whole. That's his whole. That's his character's whole reason for existing is uh, that he needs insulin. That's the whole <laughs> reason. So, like, when before they take off for the second time, a lot of the prisoners get off the plane, and there's these like kind of weird little side stories. So one is Nicolas Cage trying to find a syringe. <laughs> <laughs> and then and I'm like, oh, I hope he finds that syringe. And then the other one is Steve Buscemi's character has wandered off and he's like having tea with a little girl. Okay. And you're like, he's gonna fucking eat that girl or something. Well, like, well he's gonna I mean, he's gonna murder. I mean he's yeah. gonna Yeah. And so why is that little girl there? At first she's alone. There are no adults around. Yeah. She's in the bottom of a pool. Yeah. And she's in dirty clothes. And she's just having a tea party by herself, and he shows up. Yeah. And it's only there to make us feel nervous that he's going to murder this child. Yes. Which he's not going to do because he's not into kids. Yeah. But that's why not is his, he? That's not his jam. He's that's like, not his jam. So why are they? It's it's really upsetting. I think I remember like like, like why are you raising the stakes like this? It uh, is. It's it's because this kid has nobody. There's no adults around her. Yeah. Whatsoever. That. And is... then we're not. I, are no, we go- trying to think. I mean, are we saying like he's really not that bad of a guy because he wouldn't eat a kid if he had a chance? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's not that bad. Yeah. No, there's there's a couple of things where I was like, it takes you out of the movie. Like, first of all, the scene is really really creepy. So I don't want to make it sound like it's not a good scene. It's a good scene and what it's trying to do, and it is really really creepy. And it goes back to the idea that um his character there he's in a whole other movie like they could make a spin right. off with that dude and i'd probably go see it he's super fucking creepy and smart and and you know he's got that steve buscemi like delivery so it's you know very entertaining but also there's like this constant threat of rape for the yes. female guard that i i just it takes me out like every time i'm like come on like can't they just threaten to kill her like the rest of the guards? Why does it have no. to be rape? Well, like- it has to be Monica. Po- it starts with Monica Potter. Potter, excuse yeah. me. 
you know, Poe's wife, like she's the object of like these three men, their lust and their, their like anger towards her because she's with this other guy. Yeah. And then it's Rachel, the guard, guard Sally. Yeah. And then it's the little girl. It's like almost all of the women, there's only four women in here. There's a woman that works at the office with John Cusack. I don't know what she does, but she's just like follows him around and whatever. Mm -hmm. But the other women, they're all being, you know, they're the object of the of fascination by these creepy men. Yes. And it's, it's really upsetting. It is. It's, it's the part that takes me out. Yeah. Um, one other thing, uh, the Steve Buscemi character says, one girl, I drove through three states wearing her head as a hat. Yeah. I'm How like, do what you the do fuck? that? <laughs> what, did she have like a really big head? Maybe. Is she, she like twice his size? I mean, he's a smaller guy. So I don't know. But I mean, that was a little like, okay, we're really trying to go Hannibal Lecter. I don't know. Maybe he scooped it all out and wore it like a mask. Oh, okay. Or, or maybe her head had a hat on it. So then he put the head on top of his head and the head. And so it was a hat. a hat and a head and a hat. Okay. I don't know. I, but my I like, mind went I like, places. My, I like the joke he said when they take off for the second time and it's just the prisoners and they're playing Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> And he's like, I don't think they get the irony of playing a band that died in a plane crash <laughs> as we're taking off. He's very smart. Which I thought, he is. He is smart. I'd like to see his movie. Yeah. Like I would. I actually would pay money for that. I'd pay money it, to watch this one again too. But I would like to pay yeah. a little bit more to see that movie. <laughs> I just wish this movie made more sense. I don't. I don't. Like I said, I don't. Get, I don't understand what's going on. And you think it's over and it's not. It just keeps going. Mm -hmm. It does, and the, it gets the stakes get weirder yeah. and weirder. And then at the very end, and of course we knew this was going to happen, but he gets reunited with his wife and his daughter. Yeah. And the kid looks terrified of him. As, like, she, she, as she should be. As she should be. I mean, look at his hair. <laughs> he, and he never visited, he never had his wife visit him or mm -hmm. his daughter visit him. And then he brings this mangy rabbit that was like this, this not a rabbit, it's like a doll. Yeah. A stuffed animal. But it was in the sewer. He grabbed it from the sewer. Yeah. Here, gave have, it to this, her. have this disease ridden stuffed animal. <laughs> you got our, I, you got I, our I daughter got vaccinated. In there. <laughs> I hope she's vaccinated. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's just like and just like I'm sorry, Monica Potter. Like, why would she stick with this asshole like all these years? Because she loves him. Because the oh. Leanne Rhymes song tells us that they love each okay. other. Okay, and that song was everywhere. I how can I live without you? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I I like that song. I I have a soft spot yeah. for it. I for both versions. There's two versions. There's um, Trisha Yearwood, and yeah. then there's Herbert. Yeah, yeah. I do want to say so. There's. They they land in Vegas, and I wrote in my notes, why do Nicolas Cage movies always end up in Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> Honeymoon in Vegas? Leaving Las Vegas? Leaving Las Vegas? Yeah, you're right. Air. There might be more. I should dig in. Um, as the plane is crashing, um, Steve Buscemi's character starts singing, he's got the whole world in his hands, which is pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> and then, so the, the, the plane crashes, they probably kill a lot of people, but the movie doesn't want to get into that. That's fine. Whatever. And then Cyrus the virus gets away and he's like on top of like a fire truck that's like pulling away. <laughs> it's so weird. And then Nicolas Cage and John Cusack both hop on police. This is where you think the movie's going to be over. But instead, right. like they both hop on police motorcycles and try. To and I was like, Cameron, dude, your job is done. Like, go be with your wife and kid and let the cops handle it. But he's like, no, I got to catch the bad guy. Because he's always going to make sure that every man is brought back and all that mm -hmm. stuff. That's part of his personality. That's why it's like, Trisha, that's right. Trisha Poe, she should dump his ass. Yeah. He should be taking care of his family. Yeah. So they both get on motorcycles and you just wait for them <laughs> to, like, do a fucking fist bump or some shit. But they don't. And then they chase the the fire truck. And then some more shit happens. I, honestly, I don't. I blanked all that out. But I know. Same here. It's. It is like the movie goes on like 15 minutes too long. <laughs> and then just, after the credits, or like, it's like, and now the movie's over. And then it's like, when you think it's over, it's still like, here's Steve Buscemi's character, like at a fucking roulette table or a craps table. And he's like, you know, 
I'm he I'm in or something like that. And I was like, are we supposed to think that's funny? This murderer is wandering around now. He's gonna kill all those people. That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> but we kind of like him because he didn't kill the girl. Mm-hmm. So we're, it's very confusing. It's a very low it's, bar. <laughs> it's a super low bar. It's a very confusing movie. I will say this, it's super entertaining. Like it is. I, I I laughed a lot. I mean, probably when I wasn't supposed to be, <laughs> but right. I, I still found it incredibly enjoyable. It and is. they don't make them like this anymore. I, I don't think anyway, but I, 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 you, it's just the kind of caliber of people that are involved with this. Yes. It, you know, these are Oscar winners and people who have very classy resumes that are involved in this, but yeah. it's very much a Bruckheimer film. It's a very dude centered yes. You know, a lot of action, a lot of explosions, threat of rape, you know, all of that's in there. <laughs> you know, all the staples. And that's why and that's why we wanted to do Con Air, because it is super representative of these kinds of movies in the 90s. So it was like Bad yep. Boys, Crimson Tide, The Rock, Armageddon, you know, Enemy of the State, yep. like Gone in 60 Seconds. These were all like Jerry Bruckheimer movies. And, you know, and before that, Bruckheimer used to make movies with this guy, Don Simpson, but he died um, but the, these are the kind of movies they made in the 80s. Beverly Hills Cop, Top Gun, Days of Thunder, like very mm-hmm. like dude movies, except, right. for, except for Flashdance. They also made Flashdance, not a dude but that, movie. But that was early in their careers. Like, once the, like right. once the 80s kicked in and they made money with Top Gun and all the, like the other ones that you mentioned, they were like super dude centered mm-hmm. for a very long time. But like you said, Don Simpson died and look him up sometimes. He really liked cocaine, apparently. <laughs> he, he liked to party. Yeah, that was his yeah. that was his thing. That was his thing, and that's what killed him. And then Bruckheimer really does more television than anything else Yeah. nowadays. But they were huge in the 80s and 90s. Absolutely. Those movies were expensive. They were big. They were splashy. And they just didn't care too much about plot or whether or not things made sense. Like John Malkovich, he's on top of the, the fire truck. Mm-hmm. Why does he go in the fire truck? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe like, he just always wanted to ride on top. Like Team Wolf. Like he's just like he's on top. Team Wolf. He's up there he's like wolfing it. Everybody's <laughs> gone surfing. <laughs> and he's like up there like woo. Woo. <laughs> I know. It was just like, what? It's, it's so just... weird. But he, it's fun. It is fun. And Malkovich played, I don't know, wasn't it like the same character in in, in the line of fire? I think I love in the line of fire. I think he's yeah. even he's it's the same character for sure. But he the character in the line of fire didn't have a great sense of humor. He was That's just true. just a cold killer. Here he just gives him some some one liners to throw around, so mm-hmm. he could be a little more flamboyant. Yeah, but yeah, I like to think of this movie as the prequel to being John Malkovich. It brought well. All we need is Cameron Diaz, right? Because we got Cusack, we got Malkovich. We got yep. I like to think that that's what it is. And because I've created a whole being John Mal- Malkovich, like cinematic universe. Everything's a cinematic universe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hear about some of the other people that almost got uh, Nicolas Cage's role? Yes, please. I put together a list. Um, these are all people who were considered uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. This yeah. all makes sense. Uh, Bruce Willis. Yep. Totally. Kurt Russell. Yep. I would watch the shit out of the Kurt Russell I, version I, of this Actually, movie. I think Kurt Russell would have done a better job. I think he would have been. Yeah. Kurt Russell. He, Kurt Russell. 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 Kurt Russell is a national treasure. That's all I'm going to uh, say. I'm, I'm totally with you on that. Uh, John Claude Van Damme. Sure. <laughs> Steven Seagal. Oh, God. Creep. Yeah. Uh, Dolph Lundgren. Johnny yeah. Depp. It, actually, this is a whole list of fucking creeps now. Steven Seagal, Johnny <laughs> Depp, Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and now we get into the non-creeps. We got Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. That could, yeah. But he didn't need this. Um, no. And then we got Brad Pitt and even Tom Cruise. Well, that's because the Bruckheimers, they were aiming yeah. high there. Yeah. They were. But they got Nicolas Cage. Yeah. And then I read, so yeah, John Cusack super hated the part, uh, but also Robert Downey Jr. was approached at one point, Charlie Sheen and Matthew Broderick. 
<laughs> I think Matthew Broderick would have been an interesting choice. Yeah, didn't but he would have looked very befuddled. Yeah, is this when did um, is this this is around the same time that Godzilla remake came out? So. Yeah. Yeah, Matthew Broderick, you probably made the wrong choice. You probably should have made to Con Air. Yeah. Yeah. Because that Godzilla movie's terrible. And then everyone and their brother was approached about playing Cyrus. Uh, Gary Oldman, which that would have been awesome. Yeah. Uh, Tim Robbins, Ed Harris, William Hurt, uh, Kevin Bacon, Michael Keaton, uh, Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> this seems like a little all over the map, actually. I'm like, I'm questioning this list now. Uh, yeah. Michael Douglas. He's Michael Douglas? Yeah, maybe. No. James Galdafini. Yeah. That might have been good. Uh, Ron Perlman. That might have been good. Maybe Sean Penn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that, but whatever. Anyway, lot, a lot of people. A lot of people were in. Do you want to hear uh, the other movies of 97? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you have anything else about Con Air before I go on to the this list? No, I think I'm done. Yeah. I think we've said more than I anyone think... needs to say about Con Air. Yeah. Which, yeah. by the way, it's, it's very entertaining. I don't mean to make it sound like I no, don't I... like the movie. No, it's it's super entertaining. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I, I still don't understand where they were going, where they stopped. I would like to see a map of... <laughs> If somebody could draw me a map of where they were going and where they stopped along the way and how John Cusack is always where they land, I would love that. Thank you. <laughs> that would be super helpful. Uh, so 97 movies. Number 10 was The Full Monty. This is the top 10 okay. movies, by the way. Uh, the Fifth Element, a movie that everyone yep. loves except for me. I I can't. I I don't know what people love about that movie. I just get very bored with it. I don't know what it is. I just can't get into it. Yeah, I I feel like it's one of those ones that maybe I need to give it another chance. But I remember seeing it in the theater, and everyone I saw it with really liked it, and I was like, I didn't like it at all, at all. But people love it. Uh, my best friend's wedding. <laughs> it's Margot's favorite. My favorite, yeah. Uh, she did an episode of F This Movie where they talk about my best friend's wedding, and you guys should go listen to it because it's hilarious and awesome. Uh, number seven is Liar Liar. That one's entertaining. I love Liar Liar. It's entertaining as well. I like that one, yeah. Number six, As Good As It Gets. No, um, I hate that movie. I'll pass. Number five, Air Force One. That was very mm -hmm. entertaining. That's the other airplane movie that came out. <laughs> and was it? And Gary Oldman was the villain in that one. See, that's why they yes, couldn't. Yes, he was. Get, that's why they couldn't get Gary Oldman. He's busy. <laughs> Number four is Tomorrow Never Dies. Not a very good James Bond movie. No. Number three is Men in Black. Like I love Men in Black. I love Men in Black. So good. Number two, The Lost World, Jurassic Park. That's a terrible. Yep. Movie. Terrible. Not very good. No. And then number one uh, is, of course, Titanic, which everybody has seen and. I like, actually. I like Titanic, too. Yeah. It's one of those ones. It's cool to shit on it, kind of like Forrest Gump. But I actually like Titanic. I think it's very I like Forrest Gump. And, and I, I like yeah, Forrest Gump, I, too. I'm a defender. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't apologize for that. I think it's a really good movie. I think it's very entertaining. Yeah. Very watchable. The performances are great. Yeah. I love it. There's um, a... So, no, go ahead. No, no I was going to say, do you want to hear about the movie? I mean, the top songs of 97. But... Yes, I do. Okay, I'm just going to give you a little pastiche of okay. different things that came out. We have Hit the Ties by the Notorious B.I.G. I love that song. I fucking love that song. Um, Say You'll Be There, Spice Girls. I love that song. I love that one, too. Uh, Semi-Charmed Life, Third Eye Blind. <laughs> I saw them at Live 105's BFD. Yep. Such uh, a Live Mbop. 105 BFD yeah. band. Uh, I think they're also from the Bay Area. Yeah, uh, Mbop by Hanson. So catchy. Yeah. Uh, Unbreak My Heart, Tony Braxton. Remember that one? Yes. Tony Braxton was everywhere in the 90s. She was rad. Uh, Foolish Games, You Were Meant for Me, Jewel. Oh, yeah. And she was so She popular. was very popular. And the number one song that year, it's um, Candle in the Wind, the oh Elton John song he did for Princess Diana's funeral. That 
that song, that single, he sold 33 million copies That's of it. So just of that song. Crazy that people that would insane? buy it because what do you really want to listen to it over and over? I don't. Oh no, I didn't want to listen to it then. <laughs> I just thought it was dreary. It's... And I like Elton and I liked Princess Diana. Yeah. I was just like, this is a level of maudlin I can't it is I can't do. Yeah. So depressing. It's so depressing. I could I I would never buy the single because I wouldn't want to ever listen to it again. Once is enough. Yeah. Do you remember um, there was this, the song from Titanic, the My Heart Will Go On? That was all over the of radio course. in 97. And they used to splice in like clips from the movie. They used to do that with movies. They had that Bruce Springsteen one. Remember that? Yeah. Secret Garden or what yeah. was that? Oh, yeah, Jerry yeah, McGuire. yeah. From Jerry Maguire. Jerry yeah. Maguire. They used to do that all the time. And you complete me. Oh, yeah. oh no, you had me at hello. You had me Everybody at loves that line. Ugh. We need to do Jerry Maguire sometime. We, we really, do. We really, really do. I'm wondering why don't they do that for How Do I Live with like clips from Con Air? <laughs> <laughs> Love your work. Love your work. <laughs> Just Put like, the bunny back in there. the box. <laughs> If, so, uh, if somebody wants to make that for us, that would be awesome. Thank you. <laughs> well, we'll definitely listen to it. Please and thank you. Uh, <laughs> what else are you dorking out about? I am dorking out about uh, Apple Plus has a TV show called The Morning Show. Ooh, how is and it? It's actually, I think it's really good. And I, I got a new Roku so I can update and put the Apple channel mm -hmm. on my TV because I'm watching this on my phone, which I normally don't like watching things on my phone, but I'm a bit of an insomniac, so sometimes I do stay up yeah. watching things. But it's Reese Witherspoon, Jennifer Aniston, Steve Carell, uh, Billy, Tommy, uh, Billy Crudup, excuse me, um, Martin Short has a part in here. And they spent, it was Apple spent $30 million an episode. That's insane. Which is me. insane. And it's very, it's crazy because Jennifer Aniston and Steve Carell, they were a morning show duo. Mm -hmm. And the first episode, you find out that Steve Carell, he's basically the stand-in for Matt Lauer, oh. that he's being fired for sexual harassment. And you sort of like, how much did Jennifer Aniston know about his behavior? And it's it's really interesting. It really it talks about what it's like to start, you know, what these morning shows are like and how much money they make for their networks and what they, and just the politics of them. Jennifer Aniston has an apartment that's like insane. Of course. You just, uh, it's gorgeous. She's great in this part. I think here's the, Jennifer Aniston is a TV star. Yeah. She's so good on TV. There's yeah. been this thing about like, let's try to make Jennifer Aniston a movie star. And I was like, we should stop doing that because she's really I'm sorry. Some people are just really great TV stars. No, she is. And she, she is. is. And, and that's and not an so insult. Good. No, I mean it in a great way. Like she's very relatable. Yes. But as 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 beautiful as she is, as thin as she is, with the perfect hair and everything, there's a vulnerability that she has. Mm -hmm. And she's playing someone who's in her 50s, looks 35, by the way. I mean, right. she looks great. But the insecurity that she has about someone younger coming along and taking over. And their whole thing, like her relation with Steve Carell, there's, they're, they were great friends. And so, you know, she feels this torn be, torn about it because, of course, what, she doesn't agree with what he did, but she really likes him because yeah. they were hanging out together for like 10 years. And their chemistry is incredible. Like they have this secret friendship, like the, he, he, cause he lost his job and he, he's being dumped by his wife. So he just gets in his car and he drives around New York in the middle of the night. And there's people that do that. There's something like the, the, People, it relieves anxiety oh. and and he will jennifer anderson will just drive with him sometimes and she'll say like you fucked it up you screwed up what we had and no and that it's it's i don't know i don't know how to tell you like I'm, I, it's getting mixed reviews i really like it mm. i really really like it i'm totally invested in like how it, it turns out um it looks great they put all that money on the yeah. screen i mean my little phone screen but it makes New York look beautiful and Reese Witherspoon is great Tommy Cr oh god there's a scene okay this last episode Tommy Crudup is like the general oh, Billy, manager Billy Crudup. Billy. Tommy Crudup works for, uh he works at a uh, Rachel Ray show and I pitch him every once in a while for my other job so that's why his <laughs> his sorry Billy Crudup yes. is the actor 
He's a singer, too. I forgot this. He's done Broadway shows where he's been singing, I and there's a that. scene. I, yeah, and there's a scene where he's the big boss of the network, and he comes in from L.A., he comes to New York to kind of oversee this transition. And there's a scene where he and Jennifer Aniston sing a song from Sweeney Todd. Oh. And she has a great voice. He has a great voice. Who knew? And it's really compelling. And it really, it's, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm, I'm totally dorking right. out about it. I, it's really good. I'm going to put it on the list then because I just, I bought a new iPhone recently and they gave me a year of Apple TV. I, it's great on the, if you're on like the bar train going yeah. home, it's perfect for that. It makes sense to me that Apple would actually create a television show that would look great on your phone. Yeah. It's what they do, right? So I'll yeah. totally watch it. Yeah, I, right. I think you'll like it. Yeah. Excellent suggestion. Thank you. I um, started watching the show Dollface on it's Hulu. Not. It's it. I think it just came out. It's I stars, thought you were dumping Hulu. And I, I am dumping Hulu. That's why I was like, <laughs> I was like, first of all, Hulu, what the fuck? 60 bucks a month is what they want for their like live TV. And I was like, that's insane. And no, like, you get the you get the one that's like eight dollars a month or something. Well, then, I, the reason I got Hulu is so I could have live TV. So you, know? you don't have the regular cable. No. Oh, so you cut the cord. Yeah, I cut the cord. So yeah, no, I never did that. Hulu and I might get back together at some point, but I'm gonna try going without, and we're gonna switch anyway. Everyone doesn't okay. need to hear that, but maybe they do. <laughs> we're gonna try. We're gonna try Sling for a little while. And then maybe Hulu and I will get back together. But for right now, we're breaking up. So I decided, well, I'm going to watch a bunch of their original shit before my time's <laughs> up. So I watched an ep I watched two episodes of Dollface on, uh, yeah, on Hulu last night. And it stars Kat Dennings, the girl from, like, uh, Two Broke Girls. Yeah. Um, I think she's in the Thor movies. Um, I think she's really, really good. I really like her, so I was very curious. And I like the idea a lot because it's about she was in this relationship for five years, and she's one of those girls who, like, ditched all of her friends the minute she got a boyfriend. And right. Now Big her, mistake. Yeah, her relationship is over, and she has no one. And she kind of tries to reconnect with her old friends. And obviously they're, like, meh, like, annoyed with her for leaving, but they still really care about her. So – there's like two shows going on because there's the idea of this is a real thing that happens like women do do this they like kind of pour everything into their relationships and they ditch their friends and by the way ladies don't do that you'll be sorry please don't do that um, yeah but she does that and then the idea of her like rebuilding her life and trying to rebuild those friendships and find her way without her boyfriend that's a real thing that happens and would be a really really good show but then the show also puts in these like weird like like visual gags where it's like you know everybody get on the bus that's leaving relationshipville and it's driven by like a woman who's a cat cuz she's a quote crazy cat lady and you know then they drop them off at the train station and it's like go pick up your emotional baggage at baggage claim you know and i was like we don't need all that shit like the idea no. of the show is really good. It doesn't need the weird, like, visual asides. There's That feels like it's Allie McBeal stuff. Yes! Yeah. It's exactly... Which, I hated that show. Yeah. Allie, it, that is such a good description. Thank you. That's yeah. exactly what it is. It's these weird things that are only in her head. I don't... It's very weird. So, it's like the, the story is good, but that stuff, I'm like, we don't need it. But the show's really short. It's it's only a half hour. It's an easy watch. Kat Dennings is great. I really like her. There's there is like really good stuff in there. It's just that part kind of turns me off. But I'm gonna keep watching it until my Hulu runs out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also gonna try to watch a bunch of uh, the season two of Castle Rock. But I haven't gotten definitely, there yet. Definitely watch that. Yeah, my husband's traveling next week, so that's when I get to watch all my spooky stuff. <laughs> so I'll watch <laughs> Castle Rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this was super fun. I'm so glad we talked about Con Air. I, yeah, we went back and forth, like which what next movie we should yeah. do. And we went right back to Con Air, our first suggestion. I think that was the best one. I think it was so super too. fun. 
It was super fun. Where can people find you on the internet, Margot? You can find me on social media at Brooklyn Fitchick. That's for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And my blog is brooklynfitchick.com. And you can find me at thesoniashow.com and the Sonia Show on Twitter. I'm not really on Facebook, you guys, because I'm breaking up with them. Um, but you can find Dorking Out wherever you listen to your podcast, which you're listening to right now, and at dorkingout.com and Dorking Out Show on Twitter. Um, you can find us on Facebook, but like I said, don't check it very often. And thanks for talking about Con Air with me. This was so much fun. This was awesome. He's got the whole world <laughs> in his hands. 